Okay, while I'm getting my slideshow set up here, I just want to suggest that if you've been sitting for the past couple of sessions, you know, stand up, stretch, take a deep breath. My name is Martin Rhymes, and I am the owner of hitthemarktrading.com. And I started a new website a couple of years ago, seasonalityforecast.com, because I've always been so intrigued with seasonality. And that was what we're going to talk about today. Uh, this is me, and I'm located in southwest Florida. I've been doing this business of, of educating people for about 10 years, and that includes day trading with a course called Just Day Trade, position trading, uh, my boot camp, and I present a nightly market update for clients that want to have daily instruction. Uh, we primarily follow uh, the futures market rather than stocks, uh, but of course you can trade ETFs off of uh, the futures. And then my Trader Weekly Review is a it's it's a macro it's kind of a big report that I present each weekend. And then I've got the introduction to seasonality forecasting. As far as trading, I've been doing this for about 20 plus years. Okay, and when I teach, I'm calling trades in advance from the right edge of the price chart with specific entry, targets, initial protective stop, and then trailing stop considerations. This is all to teach you to become your own expert. You are the trader in command. No two people are gonna trade exactly the same, okay? So this is all about teaching you, giving you the tools so that you can feel comfortable. As far as seasonality, seasonality forecasting, I always discuss this as part of the lay of the land. And when we look at our technical indicators, when we look at seasonality forecast, what are we focusing on? We're focusing on the herd that actually moves the market. Okay. Now, a disclaimer here, we're all adults. Uh, remember that uh, trading whether you're trading stocks, options, bonds, futures, currencies, anything, it all involves risk. And the truth is that some people are not cut out for trading, and that's fine. Um, past results are not indicative of future results. We know that too. Okay. Now, what is seasonality forecasting? Capitalizing or trading on repeating price events based on calendar dates. Now, I know that sounds absurd, right? But the more that I do this, and, and I've been approaching seasonality first with just this inquisitive thirst. And I remember years and years ago subscribing to someone who really was pushing the seasonality on the US dollar. And this is a published, well-published author book writer, everything, and a big time guy. And, and so I thought, well, he must know, he must know. And of course I lost my money because the trade didn't work out. So what, what does that tell us? Well, nothing in life or trading is 100%. What I believe is that we can utilize seasonality because the smart money is using it. When we follow seasonality, we are following the herd which is controlling the markets. Okay? I do not believe in random market theory. So our first mantra is if an action repeats, we can trade it. And the second mantra is nothing in life or trading is 100%. Now let's just take a look at gold. I just want to whet your appetite here. And as you look at my chart, I want you to think, how would you trade this action? Well, either gold futures, buy or sell, 
Uh, you can do options on gold futures, puts or calls. You can look at the GLD, which is a gold ETF. You can look at uh, an ETF on gold miners, GDX or GDXJ. Uh, you can look at individual gold stocks. What else can you do? You can trade options on the ETFs or gold stocks. One of the things I liked about the first two speakers is these guys both use options. Okay, I like that because I use them. Um, so here's here's weekly gold now. You know, I, I I sent this out weeks and weeks ago. And what you're looking at on the bottom is seasonal trend. These charts are by Trade Navigator. Seasonal trend. And we're looking at, you know, well over 20 years of data. And it's all assimilated to present a seasonal trend of what price is likely to do. And if I can get a pointer here, let me find my pointer. One second. Pointer. Okay. Here we go. We expected the rise in gold. Right? This is where my pointer is. Why did we expect that? Because the same thing happened last year because the same thing happened the year before. And of course I can go back. So what is the trade? Well, the trade is go long until it looks like we wanna sell the week ending, you know, or I should say after the February 22nd, we need to, we need to sell. So all of the all of the dates are a Friday. So that means on February 22nd, either that day sell or the following Monday. Okay. Here we go. Boom. Worked. Here we go. 2018. Where's my? Here it is. Dropped. Yes. Kind of went in a little congestion but then you've got another sell signal here this looks like april 26 so my gosh the bottom fell out boom well where, where are we today hello right again right on schedule is this random market theory i don't think so not at all. You see, when they start the rise, what's going on in the United States? What's going on in Europe? Everyone is focused on holidays, last minute shopping, office parties, family coming in. Volume goes way down in the trading markets. It is the ideal time, if you're going to push the market higher, it's the absolute, the ideal time because you've got no competition. So I fully expect over here, about that third week of December, that I'm gonna be buying gold or trading options on an instrument that will appreciate because gold appreciates. And my date to sell will be, I'll have to look at my calendar, and whatever the date is in 2020, it'll be February, I think it'll be February 21. <clears throat> and that's a sell. Now, if, 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 you, if you're interested, and if this is really opening your eyes, then I've got a lot more to show you. And remember, it doesn't matter if you don't trade futures, don't worry about that. You can easily take gold mining stocks, an ETF, or the gold ETF. 
trade options on them or just buy them or sell them. I like options because it's greater leverage and controlled risk. Now, once you get into trading and you understand the concept of correlation, silver is going to ride in the same car most of the time with gold, so you might as well put those trades on too. Just check your seasonal chart. Now, if I have your attention, why and how does seasonality forecasting work? I believe big money moves the market and you are simply following the herd. So seasonality is best viewed as a human herd behavior pattern. The pattern started with nature made commodities. For example, the growing season. You've got uh, time for the farmer to plant. Well, there could be risk associated with that, right? So they tend to drive the price up because maybe the farmer cannot get into the field. Then you've got weather concerns, right? Gosh, what if we have a drought? Well, they build a price premium in there. All of a sudden, in the fall, and this happens every single year, in the fall, what happens? Supply and demand. Farmer has harvest, more product brought to the market, price falls. In the meat market, now I don't really follow the meats. That's an extremely dangerous market for people who are not right there trading. But with the meat market, hogs, cattle, live cattle, feeder cattle, you've got the birthing season, the growing season, the slaughter season. With gold, you know, it used to be where there was all kind of reports on the the phenomenon of Indian buying season because if you ever go to India, you'll see the Indians absolutely adore gold. And when those guys decide to buy gold, it used to affect the gold market dramatically. So, so, so these, these are nature-made patterns. And of course, there's more. We also have man-made futures, such as currencies. You know, when the Japanese are uh, tax season comes, a lot of their Japanese money overseas is repatriated home. Well, that shows up in seasonality. Uh, bonds will typically move seasonally in response to how stocks are moving. A lot of times if the stocks are going up, we're going to see the bonds going down because it's a, called a risk on market. And we can drill this down to even individual stocks and groups of similar stocks that show similar seasonality attributes. And what, what do I mean by that? Well, retail trading stocks. There, there was a guy who won, I think, the World Trading Contest one time in stocks. And all he did was trade the seasonals. And I remember reading an, an interview and he said, you know, the retail stocks all go up at the same time in anticipation of the uh, kids go back to college buying. Then you've got the retail season that starts with Thanksgiving holiday and through Christmas. We also see that there's certain times of the year where uh, industrial stocks will fare better than other stocks. Okay. Bottom line is it's patterns. Humans thrive on patterns and are drawn to patterns as an instinct. The previous speaker, you heard him talk about candle patterns. 
we love patterns, okay? Including when I teach day trading, there's time patterns. Uncanny, but, but true. There's just, there's time patterns for the day trader that they must be aware of. We know exactly when to expect a move in crude. Three times a day. Or stocks, there's time patterns. The, the point is, human nature, we focus on patterns. Now with seasonality forecasting, large traders and groups of large traders are simply placing the exact same trade year after year after year more often than not. Now, do you think having this information is beneficial? Well, I certainly do, absolutely. What you have is advance notice of the expected price path roadmap, right? When you pair this with technical analysis, you gain greater confidence for your trade prior to placing the trade. Got that? I like to consider it's a it's a quiet confidence. You you already feel like, hey, I've got a trade idea here. My technicals say, you know, and I don't care what you follow, I don't care what method you follow. I, I prefer trend and momentum, but you've got something that tells you to take a trade, and then you look at the seasonal tendency. Or I like to have my calendar, a trading, a dedicated trading calendar, and I've got it marked up with the seasonal dates, and that just alerts me. It says, okay, gosh, wow, in three weeks I should be looking at uh, natural gas, or, or, or I should be look, looking at gold, or stocks tend to act a certain way. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad to know this. So what I will do then is with that at the forefront of my mind, I will look for a technical analysis reason to take the trade. So when you couple these together in seasonality forecasting, it's excellent for trend trading, excellent for shorter term position trading, and certainly excellent for understanding the macro price moves. However, there are certain limitations of seasonality forecasting. Absolutely. For this reason, you should never, ever use seasonality forecasting as a standalone tool. I don't care, you know, what people say. If you find someone very persuasive about seasonality, it can never be used as a standalone tool. You need to look at every single trade you make as an independent event. Yes, there's a probability, but you can't use this as a standalone tool. Remember that man-created futures are subject to the whims and actions of man. So for example, with the Fed President Ben Bernanke, he absolutely destroyed the sell side seasonal forecasting signals, big time. This was destroyed through quantitative easing. They did quantitative easing once, twice, and they did it a third time. Now, the buy side seasonality acted like it was on high octane fuel. But when you have the government coming in there and, and, and doing what they did, um, it destroyed because in the final analysis, banks, central banks' monetary policy is going to really determine how the, the smart money is moving. And they were flooding the markets with money. In 2015, uh, China devalued the currency and it momentarily caused the USA stock sell-off, okay. 
that's a surprise event. Guess what? Seasonal might not have worked that year. Right now, what we witness with politics, you've got a war, trade war between China and USA. Well, the largest client for USA soybeans is China. And not only do you have this unprecedented demand destruction, but you have such a huge abundant supply that there's problems storing the product. So the seasonals go out the window. Forget it. And this is why you look at the soybean chart and they're just moving sideways. There's no real trend. Soybeans and corn. Who would have ever thought that the largest customer would stop buying? Well, subject to the whims and actions of man. So my point is we don't just blindly follow these things. Right now, the British pound. The Brexit talks really overrule the British pound seasonality tendency. They'll settle. And when they do settle, I think that the seasonals are going to work again beautifully. I think the pound's going to absolutely break out into a beautiful, tremendous trending pattern. So what about nature-made considerations? Well, if you have a severe drought and you are looking for the crop prices to fall during harvest, well, guess what? If there was a severe drought, there's not enough crop, the prices simply never come down. They don't come down. So that's just something we have to be aware of. Economic perceptions can affect industrial metals. Okay, just I want you to be aware of these considerations. The Brazilian real affects coffee and sugar. This very strong correlation there. Coffee and sugar are both extremely oversupplied. So now what, what's moving it, believe it or not, is how the Brazilian real is moving. What about crude? Well, when crude launched the price war a few years ago, there go the seasonal tendencies for that. And since then, now OPEC is saying we're going to cut production. They're trying to drive the price up right in line with seasonal tendency. But we got the U.S. with expanded production, incredible production, historic levels of production. So my point is we, we just have to be aware of it. And it, it brings you back to the idea you do not trade seasonal forecast as an independent tool. You marry the tool with technical analysis. When we look at price bars, we are reading both the footprints of big money movement and market psychology. We use indicators telling us when we should take a trade. Adding seasonal tendencies like knowing the wind is likely to fill the sale of your trade. Now, I want to share with you the most reliable stock seasonality trade that I've found. This is the results. Now, I just took this screenshot uh, and gave it to clients last Monday, the February 25, after market close. So we put this on according to seasonality. The QQQs for a single position, it cost us $279. Well, as of uh, February 25, profits $192.50. That's uh, almost a 66% return on investment. Um, SPY cost each position $297. A 
Now, you know, we these are some longer dated trades. So basically, you put it on, and it's 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 like when you cook and you have something simmering on the back burner. Okay, you know that when it finishes, it's just going to be delicious. Okay, so the spy trade, 56.9% return. IWM, that's the Russell 2000. Our cost and risk limited to $250 per position. So my seasonality report cost $125. Just one single trade here covered the whole cost. How great is that? And this is the trade I've placed the last seven to eight years. It's incredible. Let me tell you why certain seasonals work better than others. Now, these are my thoughts. Wall Street has these two big to fail firms. Okay, like too big to fail banks, right? Or, you know, um, hedge funds as well. Now, these firms have trading divisions, like the banks. When the banks report results, they always break out how their trading department did. These divisions are tasked with making millions upon millions of dollars in profit. And the traders are handsomely rewarded. And of course, they've got PhDs working for them. And they've got their IT departments. And they have what we would consider unlimited money to throw at the market. So I believe it is in the best interest of these trading firms and departments to travel together in a herd, right? Protection in numbers straight out of the animal kingdom. So through normal market signaling, the herd moves together. The only way seasonals work with such precision, year after year, more often than not, is due to everyone in professional circles who wants to get a bonus doing the same thing every year, okay? I do not believe in the random market theory. Remember, the Forex traders at the big banks, they were all in collusion. But what happens is, if you ever, we're working in an industry, you've got these uh, industry seminars, you've got industry conventions, uh, you've also got people work at one uh, one firm and then quit and go work at another, or maybe they get transferred and say, well, the only thing I know is trading, and they go to a different part of the country. And this is how ideas are shared. I'm not talking anything sinister here. I'm talking human nature. And when, when, when you have something that works like shooting fish in a barrel, you throw money at it. And that's what happened with, with, for example, the gold trade. That's what happens with the stock market trade. I mean, you'd be a fool not to do it if you're in their business. So... What I do with respect to seasonality is I take a visual approach. I, I've, I've, I've been through that whole deal where you look at service and they, they calculate, well, if you would have placed this trade over the last 15 or 20 years, you would have made $21,000, right? And then they sometimes break it down by year. Well, maybe one year made 150, maybe the other year made 300. Maybe the other year made 1200 okay? You cannot be impressed with those big numbers. Wow, $21,000. Hey, they spread that out over 15 years. But the other thing is, these trades that are shown to you 
are never actually taken. These trades are typically computer generated where the computer is looking for the best possible outcome and maximum favorable price excursion. So when you look at the chart and you visually see, wow, yeah, I got a signal, but could I have really made that? It looked like, I mean, technically it worked, but I had to get in and get out the same day because the price went against me. The other thing I want to caution you on is when you're looking at seasonality, do not become entranced with the idea that someone has a secret sauce that they add and it's really going to make the, the the forecast even more robust. No. What, what I provide is, first off, a report, about 20 pages, on seasonality observations, including the stock trade that I just showed you the results of, and just different information on correlations you should know about, influences. Then I've got a separate chart book. And it covers, I'd say, 95% of all the features, you know, including soybean meal, orange juice, stuff that's obscure, right? Well, soybean meal is not that obscure. But orange juice, you know. The only people trading orange juice are people that don't know better. Start out and say, okay, I'll take this. A lot of the professionals avoid the sauce. I personally like coffee, especially as a day trading instrument, but that's another story. Um, the chart book is going to go back to 2011, but you have to understand the calculations are based on decades of repeating price action forming the seasonal trend. And I'm going to show you a picture of some of this. I give specific buy and sell dates. Now, we use a window approach. Never do we just say, okay, take this exact date. When I showed you that gold chart, yes, it worked on the exact date. Wonderful. Many of them will. But we don't lock ourselves into that narrow, absolute focus. We're going to say, okay, we, we got a window here. This tends to happen. It might happen a week before. It might happen a week later. We got a window here. So I'm looking for a technical reason to take this trade. And then once I'm in that trade, the seasonal tendency can act like a sail, right? Wind filling the sail, pushing the trade. So this is what you're getting. And then, you know, the trade that I put on every single year for stocks. Let me go to the um, website here. Okay. So this is my website called seasonforecast.com. And, you know, you can read about my whole approach to this thing. Absolutely. And I think I have a video on the Japanese yen. Boy, one year we made tremendous money on that. Not only with the futures, but, you know, you heard a couple guys talk about option trading. Well, we that too. You can, if you think something's going to fall, you can certainly place bets it's not going to rise and make that money and use that money to apply toward the bet that uh, says market's going to fall. Um, as I said before, $125. And this is called evergreen. That means you have no reason with this chart book filled with 50 plus charts, you've got no reason to ever buy another guide. You know, I would love to sell you something every single year. 
but I don't need to because anyone who's got half a brain understands the very nature of seasonality means it should be repeating. So this one-time investment and you've got a great trading tool in your arsenal. Now, if all you do is trade stocks, then you need to follow the S&P 500. Why? Because 90% of the stocks are going to follow the S&P 500. Absolutely. So if, you know, you heard the previous speaker talk about how he looked at all these different instruments and he got that sense it was going to move. Yeah. Market linkage. That's called market linkage. So if I'm ever going to buy a stock, sure, I'm going to, I will evaluate the stock on its own merits if I'm just trading it. If it's not an investment, just something to trade using trend and momentum. I'll, sure, I'll look at the stock, but I would be a fool not to look at the S&P 500 because I know through 20 years of trading plus 90% of stocks are going to move in the same direction as the S&P 500. Now, some might move a little more aggressively, but at the end of the day, the S&P 500 is the boss. Make no mistake. Okay, so um, I want to show you, let me find my, here it is, this is sugar. What happened here? Let's see if you can see my arrow. Seasonality said price should rise, my gosh, what happened? Price fell. Didn't we cover that whole thing about nothing is 100%? Why didn't it rise? Gosh, here it is. Seeing, believing, pictures are proof. Why didn't it rise? You've got multiple surplus production years. You've got consumer demand destruction. The hot topic is cut the sugar, right? The downside worked beautifully, more often than not. But I want to take you to what's happening now. Price, we're told, should be lower after one. Well, bingo. Absolutely. Welcome to seasonality. Okay. All right. Go back to my uh, web page. So I, I just suggest that you give this some great thought. It's a wonderful tool. That's all we do. We have we find tools that speak to us, and we do our best to figure out what is a good trade. My other website is hitthemarktrading.com. And this is really outside of the scope of today's discussion, but I just want to make you aware of it. I do have a blog. I don't contribute as much as I should to it. But, um, you know, I, I, this is a gold chart. I, I posted up there on March 5. But you can see everything that I do, whether you are a day trader or a position trader or you are interested in following future trades every single night. Um, first your call, I'm currently not charging for it. I'm just, I switched, um, upgraded the website and I'm, I'm just giving this for free now. I threw out an old mail list and I'm just starting this thing, giving it away for free. 
And what Rooster Call is, is my morning email that uh, I, I send out to clients. Now, in addition to that, I will probably send out uh, when conditions are right, I'll send out a special update. It might be at 530 in the morning. But what Rooster Call does is I look at all the news that happened overnight, and then I just give a trader's assessment, my trader assessment based on history, what I believe is important to traders, okay? So if you want to get this, you know, again, at this point, I'm not charging for it. Uh, and I normally give 30 days free, but just go to the website, sign up for it, okay? Um, day traders can watch and I show what day traders might be interested in looking at. Okay. All right. Are there any questions on anything that I have presented? Any questions whatsoever? Is my seasonal trend similar to MACD? No. Uh, MACD is a like a momentum uh, uh, indicator. So no. Uh, Adam says. Oil tends to be a real slave to seasonality. Absolutely. In fact, you know, I'll never forget one summer. And I get a phone call from my dad. And he says, hey, this guy, uh, this guy on the financial TV is telling us that gold, uh, uh, crude oil is going to go up in uh, mid-December. And I said, dad, he's just looking at a seasonality chart. Because typically it does. Does this work with individual stocks and other ETFs? Absolutely, 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 absolutely. So when I know that the seasonal tendency is starting on crude oil, for example, one year I bought uh, leaps, which are longer dated options, on uh, Stock symbol rig. It's a uh, offshore drilling firm, and you know you buy it cheap and good, and and let the magic happen. And and uh, you know, so absolutely you can work with either either buying stocks or ETFs. How can I use the information intraday? Well. If you know, for example, if you know that that gold, let me find that chart real quick. If you know that you're coming up to a seasonal tendency for gold to rise or gold to fall, then as a day trader, you have a bias, a built-in bias. So that means, you know, you're going to be saying, okay, well, seasonality says it should start rising. Check that weekly chart, check your daily chart, and you have a bias for your day trading. The problem with day trading, of course, is the intraday noise. But on this the beginning of this drop, price hit 1350, which we had a line at in my day trading, I mean my daily charts. And with our lines, we always know that they can be reversal points. So price hit 1350, and it gave a classic price reversal bar. So the very next, and I said, okay, now we're, we're looking for this price reversal bar to prove itself and that very next morning I think I sent that note out at like 6 48 a.m. and I suggested watch the go the uh, the gold it's starting to prove confirm the price reversal bar the day before and then boom, it's a huge drop. Okay. Now, for some reason, they're keeping this thing at 1286. Okay. That's fine. 
but this is how you could use it for uh, for intraday, basically giving you a heads up on um, where price has a tense tendency to run, and you would then look at your daily chart and say, okay, is there a setup? And then transfer that to your intraday trading. When will your rooster call send out in a day? I typically, well, I get it out. I promise to get it out before the market opens. So it's going to, it depends. If I have to search and search for something to talk about, um, the time just flies. So it might get out around 9 o'clock. Sometimes it'll get out a lot earlier. I typically get in the office around 5.30. Okay. So it just depends. And of course, um, today was all about the ECB. Okay, any other questions? All good questions. All right, well, I certainly hope that I have uh, got your interest up here. I firmly believe that this seasonality is smart money movements. I really do. Let me let me find this again. Is uh, it? Sorry to cut you off there, Ms. Rhymes, but we are over the time. Our next speaker is Oh, here. no problem. Okay, no problem. I appreciate right. the opportunity.